Happy Sunday, Church. Hey, everyone. Did you know that next week we are officially starting Come our in person services? But don't worry, this is not our last online yeah. service because we are going to keep going with online church. We've seen the impact and the incredible mm. opportunity it's created and the impact that it's had in people's lives. And that's the reason we want to continue. It really has. And we're so grateful that we've had the opportunity to be able to go online and also to stay online. And you know, the journey of being online services, there've been lots of high moments yep. where we've celebrated, but then there's also been those uh, mm. moments of mm. being online. Do you know that we have done, including today, 30, Three wow. online Sunday services. Wow, and all of this would not have happened yep. without our amazing volunteers Best and team volunteers. that have put it all together each week, working behind the scenes. So from our little home studio that was to preparing <laughs> scripts, filming, lighting, teleprompters, recording yes. worship teams, mastering worship audio tracks, to editing bloopers. Can I just, I think we should have a Sunday <laughs> where you watch all the bloopers that we have done for services. Gee, whiskers. <laughs> that will be quite interesting to watch. But on that note, we've also spent so much time uploading services to platforms and hosting teams, and the list just goes oh. on and on and on. And so, like Andrew said, it has been a team that has made this yeah, possible. Definitely. And so on behalf of me, on behalf of our leadership team of Edge Church, we want to thank you, thank every you. volunteer that has made this possible, every staff member that's made it possible. We love and appreciate you guys so much. Yeah. But you know, there's that person that's been behind the camera Come for on. our entire <laughs> journey. He's the one that films all of these services and spends an average of 26 hours per week. Do you know what that is in the total? If we take the 33 plus the 26 hours. That's 858 <laughs> hours Yo, you're good at math. of putting services together and editing them. And so we thought it would just be appropriate for you to finally meet the yes. person who we see as our camera and editor master. Jonty, come here, Jonty. I can't wait for this part. <laughs> this is Jonty, and we 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 love this guy. We are so grateful for him, um, and we're grateful for all that you have done to make church happen. Yeah. He gets us. Like he knows when we're going to go off script or we're not going to get this right. Jonty just understands him, and he's usually behind the camera. Yeah. So the fact that he's in front of the camera today <laughs> is a big thing. It is. So Jonty, gentles, <laughs> tell us something about yourself. Well, um, I enjoy the outdoors, surfing, and food. And actually, I always studied to be a chef before I went to Bible college and got into media. How cool is that? <laughs> and what has been the best thing about being online services? For me, I think it's just the impact uh, that we've been able to make in people's mm. lives. You know, that the seeds that we've been able to sow in a time where people have needed such hope and mm. such despair around us and just being able to encourage people through through this platform of being online. Mm. And John T, we just want to say we really, really love you. Yeah, thank you. And we appreciate everything you've done to make it possible for us to be online week in and week out. We're very, very grateful for you. Thanks, yeah. John. No, thank you, John T. So we're going to go into the time of worship. We have so much to be grateful for. We are people of praise. Yeah. We are giving praise for our volunteers, but we're giving praise to God for yeah. what He's doing and how He's working. So let's stand and let's worship together. Come on, let's worship. And I was buried beneath my shame. And who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. And I was breathing but not alive. And all my failures I tried. It was my zoo till I met you. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. 
rescue My sin was heavy But chains break at the weight of your glory I needed shelter I was an orphan But you call me a citizen of heaven When I was blind
1 Chronicles 29 says that greatness, power, glory, victory, and honor belongs to you. Why? Because everything in heaven and on earth belongs to you. The kingdom belongs to you, O Lord. Yeah. You are the head and the ruler over everything. Now take note of verse 13. It says, now, our God, we thank you and we praise your glorious name. God, we give you all the praise that you deserve. Yeah. We thank you that it all revolves around your throne yeah. and that the praise belongs to you. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, I love being in the presence of God in worship, yeah. but we get to continue with worship with our giving because giving is also an act of worship. And today we have our Roseanne sharing yes. with us our Rosie. Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6 is one of my favorite promises from God's Word. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him and He will make your path straight. Now the end of the month has just come and gone. Be honest. Giving a substantial portion of our earnings to God just doesn't make sense to the average person. By giving first and submitting the way in which we steward our resources, doing things God's way, we can trust God will look after us. Whether you're giving today or whether you've EFT'd in the week, let's be reminded that He is trustworthy. He will look after us. He has before and He will again. He promised. The details of how to give are provided below or else they're available on our website. Now it's time to hear from Karen in Edge News. Hi, I'm Karen and welcome to Edge News. Growth Track is a great space if you are looking to find out more about who we are as Edge Church. Or perhaps you're ready to get connected to a life group or serving team. Growth Track is happening this Tuesday at 7 p.m. You can message to find out more or join us at the church building on Tuesday. Hey Edge Kids, we are so excited to see you on the 8th of November in person. Our team has created a fun online service for all our Edge kids as we count down to next Sunday. You can find our age appropriate videos on our website and don't forget to set up a fun service for your kids. We love the drive by on Friday at Elevate and seeing everyone's faces. Be sure to join us online on Friday at 7pm as we build up to ending the year strong. If you are not part of a life group, Make sure to pop us a DM on Instagram, elevate underscore EM, and we will get you connected to one of our incredible groups. Edge Church, next Sunday we start with our in-person services and we couldn't be more excited. Our services will be at 8.30 and 10.30 and we'll continue with our 9.30 service online as well. As part of this new season, adults and Edge Kids, you'll need to book a spot to join us. This is really to ensure that we create a safe and comfortable experience for you and your family. Bookings open tomorrow, so be sure to check out our social media and website for more details. And then this Wednesday, we are getting together to pray. Join us in person or online at 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Take the opportunity to come together to pray for each other, our community, church, and our nation. Edge Kids will be praying too. And yep, you've got it. You've also need to book your spot to join us at the church building. Continue to follow us on social media as we prepare for what's happening in the week to come. I'm Karen, and I wish you a beautiful Sunday and an incredible week ahead.
Thank you, Karen. So we want to keep you, Leandria and myself, updated on two things. Because you know we've been saying this, clear is kind. So number one, quickly, a reminder that this is our last week for any objections to the prospective elders that have been appointed. Mm. If you like, mm, I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> please check your emails. Including your junk folder, or you can just WhatsApp us and we'll be able to help you get onto the same page. Yes. Then, number two, most important, next week we are back together. Woohoo! So, what do you need to know? What is important for you to know mm. about coming to service next week? We're going to share five things with you. Five. That's a lot. So pay <laughs> attention, but don't worry. We'll make sure that it's all backed up on social media. Yeah. So, number one, we actually have to register to attend our services, yeah. which actually needs to be done, listen, before a Sunday service. So to make it super easy, we're using an app called Church Center. You can download it now. The details will come up below. Number two, come early to church. Yeah. And you're saying, why? Because once you arrive, you will need to be checked in mm -hmm. and then get into your seat will be different to how we've done it in the past. Yeah. So allow some time so that you're not rushed. And if you have kids, mm -hmm. you're gonna be required to check in your kids as well at the designated areas. This also takes time. Yeah. And number three, with regards to kids, we have more venues allocated to our kids, yes. which is exciting. But this is also to ensure appropriate numbers of kids in each of the spaces. But following what was gazetted by our government, our small kids and infants cannot be picked up or cared yeah. for by someone other than their guardian or parent. So it's sad for us to say this, but we're actually not able to offer yeah. edge kids for anyone under the age of two. We do, however, have a new venue with live feed, so yes. parents are actually able to still be a part of the service and have a space for kids to be kids. Yes. Number four, it is mandatory to wear our masks throughout the whole service. Yeah. This includes worship. Yeah. Because it's not only about ourselves. I know it is sucky to wear a mask all the time, but actually it's showing love for others by respect to them. By keeping our mask on throughout the whole service is loving well on others. Yeah. And number five, I know how tough this is <laughs> to keep physical distance from each other, but let's just follow yes, the rules set please. up for us so service is actually enjoyable for all. Yes. And I know that we've mentioned a whole bunch of information, yeah. um, but don't panic. We're going to put it all on social media. And if you need to, please WhatsApp us. We're here for you. Yeah. You can ask us anything. If you want to clarify something, WhatsApp us. We'd love to hear from you. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we are excited. Our teams are ready. And we are so ready to see you next week yes. for in-person services or on our online service. Yes. So let's get ready for God's word now. Let's get our hearts ready because we have the honor and I mean it, the real honor to have Pastor Pedro sharing God's word. Well, hello, it's wonderful to be able to connect with you online and so special. Greetings from Barbie and uh, we miss you and it's special to be able to meet like this. Well, I was thinking about it. 2020 is rapidly closing in on us. And what a year we've had. How many of us have had to struggle with the challenges and shifts and changes and how we had to navigate how to live this new way of life because of the pandemic. Today is the 1st of November. That means there's seven weeks and four days before Christmas. Well, that's something to look forward to. Let's celebrate Christmas. But I want to come around God's word to share with you today. And wherever you are, I'd like you to just take a moment to quieten yourself. Be quiet, silent. Close your eyes if you can. And just sit silently. God's presence is right there where you are. I want you just to be aware of him. And I'd like to pray. So if you would just be open to hearing his voice. Lord, we thank you for the grace that was in your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you that you're with us always, even when we're not aware of you. But your love always pursues us. Thank you for your kindness and your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Last week I had a wonderful connection and very interesting conversation with a retired mining engineer who had been in the mining industry for 33 years and now recently retired. We got onto the topic of what it would take to reopen a mine after it's been shut down for some time. And we spoke specifically about an underground mine, gold mine in particular. As he shared, I, I was amazed at the amount of effort and time and energy and details that goes into the process of reopening. And when he commented, when he finished talking, he commented, it's easy to flick the switch and shut it down. But oh my word, it takes hard work to reopen an underground mine. He went on to explain that teams of men would have to go underground in a detailed process of checking the levels of gases, carbon monoxide, methane, were the levels up? Was it dangerous to send men down? They would check the ventilation to see that it was all working. They would see if there were flooded areas and were there rock falls through cave-ins. Were the beams still in place that support the areas they're mining out of? Was the rail system in place, the system that moves the miners from one dugger to another? And was it safe enough for them to be there? And then just to get the smelting refinery plant up and running it would take two weeks to make sure that it was all safe. But what gripped me most, and I sat with it and listened with much interest, when the man began to tell me that before any miner went underground, they would have to go through a two weeks induction process where they checked their medical health reviewed the safety procedures. They would evaluate, are these men ready to go back underground? All in all, it would take four to six weeks to open and reopen a mine. After that conversation, I thought the next day, well, we've been through lockdown and now want opening up our churches to, and opening up our church for in-person meetings. I thought of the, what we've been through. Many have faced financial struggles and almost financial breakdown and relationship breakdown. The others who have struggled with health issues. Others have shared with me during lockdown, they've struggled to maintain their relationship with God. Somehow the impact was so great on them they said they had found themselves drifting from their relationship and strain from God. Very much the tactic and the strategy of the devil. His goal is always to lure you away from walking with God. His goal is to distract you, to let you focus on what's going wrong, to let you focus on the struggles, the hardship, and even to focus on other people. It's been his method from the beginning in Genesis chapter 3 when he tempted Eve. It says that the serpent was shrewder than any of the wild animals that the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, is it really true that God said you must not eat from any tree of the orchard? All he did was sow the doubt. And that's when he distracts you. He sows the doubt. Does God really love me? Has God forgotten me? Has God abandoned me? Is it only me that's suffering? Is it only me that's going through this? I look around and I see others living well. Maybe God has deserted me and abandoned me. And out of that place, we move into a place of being distracted. We become discouraged. Why is this happening to me? I've served God. And that doubt settles in, and somehow you find it difficult to engage with God. And yet the Word of God says, don't be afraid or discouraged. The Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Hebrews says, I will never, never fail you 
or forsake you. And so when this derailment starts, or rather when this doubt and distraction sets in, discouragement sets in, we find ourselves being disrailed, derailed actually. We find ourselves being disconnected, stuck in a place where God is distant. Paul writes to the folk in Galatia, and he says, you were running superbly. Who cut in on you, deflecting you from the true course? The, another translation says, you were running a good race. Who stopped you? from following the true way. COVID has had its impact. Sadly, some have been distracted and went into times of doubt. And some have been so discouraged that they've walked away from God. Ten of the saddest words in the New Testament. When Jesus speaks to his followers and John chapter 6, verse 66 says, Many of his followers left him and stopped following him. Walked away from God's plan for their life. Walked away from God's purposes for their life. As I was praying for our congregations, as I was praying for folk which Bobby and I do faithfully, I was reflecting and reminded of a word God gave me and dropped into my heart some two and a half years ago. The word was reset. And reset means to start again, readjust, realign to the new direction. And I believe it's time that many of us push the reset button to rise up and enter into the new reality, to go into a new era, a new dispensation that God has brought us into, to make the shifts, to embrace the place that God has brought us into. And if you've stumbled and fall and drifted, why don't you take time in this Sunday morning service to reach out and press the reset button to start again to climb back on the road to make the adjustments to realign your life and join God on the new direction that he's taking us as his people it was Winston Churchill who led the Allied forces through the six year Second World War. In their darkest moments, he would say to them, success is not final, but failure is not fatal. It is courage to continue that counts. Nelson Mandela, who spent 27 years of his life in incarceration, wrote this before he was released. The greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but rising every time you fall. I want to share about one of my heroes in the Bible, one of my heroes of faith, a man who was faithfully serving and then fell and walked away from Jesus. But I want to tell you there came a point in his life when he pushed the reset button he rose up and became the foremost leader of the New Testament church. I'm speaking about Peter, referred to as the rock, one of the closest friends of Jesus who disappointed him, who denied him, who turned away from him. I want to look at his life and take some lessons on how he started over, how he pressed the reset button. How he got up and started again in following Jesus afresh. Let's take a quick peep into his life. Peter had a marvelous encounter with Jesus when Jesus first called him. In fact, it was on the seashore while he was busy dealing with his own fishing boat and its nets. And Jesus says, come follow me. 
And listen to his response. He and his brother, they simply dropped their nets and followed Jesus. He was fully committed. His encounter led to a place that his life was so radically changed, he loved Jesus and wanted to follow him. You see, Jesus saw potential and great purpose for Peter's life, like he's seen in your life. Like when he called you to follow him, he saw what you can become. Scripture tells us that Jesus looked at intently at Peter for one moment in the book of John and said, you are Simon, John's son, but what I see is a rock and I'm calling you Peter the rock. Jesus saw his heart and God sees your heart. God knows you've been through a tough time and God is saying, I want you to start again. Start afresh. It was Peter the first to declare Jesus as the Messiah. Matthew's gospel tells us, he says to the crowd of disciples, this is the Christ, the Messiah, the son of the living God. He saw hope, he confessed, he believed he was a man of faith. But he had a weak moment. He was unfaithful to Jesus. He denied Jesus three times. And Luke's gospel describes that moment. At that moment, Luke's gospel says, the Lord turned and looked at Peter after he had denied him. And suddenly the Lord's words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you've even known me. And Peter left the courtyard weeping bitterly. Peter was a man broken. He felt a failure. He felt lost. And he walked away. I want to pick up the story in John 21 when Jesus comes to find Peter, like he's reaching out to you, seeking to find you, using this message to prompt you through the Holy Spirit to say it's time to come home. To restart again. John 21 says Jesus appeared again to the disciples beside the Sea of Galilee. This is how it happened. Several of the disciples were there, Simon, Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. And Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. What's that statement that he's making? He says, I'm going back to what I know. I'm a failure as a follower of Jesus. I'm going back to my old life. I've tried and I've failed. But verse 4 says, at dawn, Jesus was standing at the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. He called out, fellows, have you caught any fish? They replied, no. You know, they couldn't recognize his voice. They couldn't even recognize him. Because when you're in a place of discouragement, when you think you're a failure, you only hear the storms and the negative accusations of the devil. That the devil trades in words like you are a failure. And Peter was feeling that shame. They couldn't even hear his voice, couldn't even see who it was. I've discovered when I go to a place when I'm feeling ashamed because I fail, I find it hard to hear God's voice. And yet he calls to you. He called to them and he said, have you caught any fish? And he tells him to throw the net on the other side. You see, he's trying to reach out to you to tell you it doesn't matter what has happened during this time that you found yourself drifting away. Nothing will ever separate you from my love, God says. So let me take a few moments as I come and some very practical steps of how you reset and how you start your new journey again. Number one, don't 
Let your past derail your future. Own your mistake. Confess your mistake. Repent of it and turn to God and let him embrace you with his love. Paul writes to the Philippians, No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on one thing, forgetting the past, looking forward to it lies ahead. He said, I have to let go of the baggage. When you press the reset button, let go of your baggage. Let go of your hurt. Let go of your disappointment. And then restore your broken relationship with God and with others. Like the prodigal son who finally came to his senses and he said, at home even the hired servants have food enough to spare Here I am dying. I will go to my father's house and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you and no longer worthy to be called your son. Please take me as your hired servant. And the father embraced him. The father said, this is my son which lost, he's now found. He was dead, he's now alive. And he embraced him and put garments on him and slaughtered the fatted cow. I want to ask you, would you start walking back? Take that first step and confess. The third thing that I want to ask you to do is, once you've done that, would you realize, realign your life to God's plan? Would you let go of your plans and say, God, I'm surrendering to your purposes and plans? Verse 22 of John 21, Peter is engaging with Jesus. And he walks and looks behind and he sees who many believe was John. And he says, what about that one? What about him? I want you to hear what Jesus challenges Peter. What is that to you? As for you, follow me. I want to say to you today, stop blaming. Stop comparing. Stop judging. Stop looking back. Stop saying, If this didn't happen, I wouldn't have done that. Simply let go of control and follow him. Take that step of faith. Take that step of obedience. Let him control your life. And then you notice, as I come into land, Jesus recommissions Peter. He says, it's never over with me. You think you've lost it all. I will restore you. I will rebuild you. I will reestablish you. He tells him to feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, feed my sheep. He says, I have a purpose for you. It hasn't been destroyed. Rise up. Take on the challenge. I've recommissioned you to go. You know what I find amazing? When Peter recommits himself to God's plan, when he surrenders his life to God's purposes, you'll read in Acts chapter 2 verse 14, it was Peter that stood up on that day and declared the first message ever preached of the love of God to the Hebrew people that Jesus had risen from the dead. 3,000 were saved that day. God has a purpose and a plan for you. He wants to redeem your past, renew your calling, and recommission you. But today, it's your step of obedience to come home, press the reset button, start anew following Jesus. Won't you pray with me? Lord, as we recognize it hasn't been an easy season for us, but now we come to you and recognize that you are calling us to press that reset button, to start walking again, to learn from the life of Peter, to know that you have a purpose and a plan And you want to use each one of us. So, Lord, today, I pray for each person 
that is listening to this message, that today if they found that they've drifted, they've been derailed in their faith, they'll press the reset button and start anew following Jesus. Amen. For those who have been listening, maybe you've never come to that place where you've acknowledged Jesus Christ as your Lord and you've known that he loves you, but you've never taken that step of faith. I would encourage you today to take that step of faith and you say, how do I do that, Pedro? By simply saying, Jesus, will you come into my life? Would you forgive me of my sins? And I want to receive you. If that's your desire, I want to pray for you. And when we finish praying, you'll see a little symbol of a hand coming up on the screen. Just press that you've prayed that prayer. The folk would love to make contact with you. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, you gave your son to die for me and I thank you that you love me with an everlasting love. And today I come to receive you. I ask your forgiveness and I come to follow you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. God bless you. Excited about next Sunday when we are having both online and live services at our church. God bless you. Love you lots. Thank you, Pastor Pedro. What an amazing yeah. word. We are yeah. just so grateful for you and the journey that you have played and still continue to play in Edge Church. Yes, thank you. We love you and we are so grateful for you. Yeah. And next week, when we gather online and in person in the building, Yay. we are starting a new series called Run Together. How God has called us to do this journey together. Mm -hmm. But that's next week. Until then, we love you and we'll see you again. God bless you.